Does anyone else just sometimes get back home from like traveling and leave all of their necklaces in a big giant pile? And then I'm always like, I'll deal with it later. Future Rachel's problem. But now future Rachel is annoyed that all of her necklaces are tangled. Hello everyone, welcome back. I hope you guys are having an awesome week. Today we are gonna be testing out a whole bunch of new fall makeup. These are all products that I've launched fairly recently, ones that I think are really interesting and unique and I wanted to test them. So I got my hair back, got my nails on, I'm ready to go. Also, if you like my nails, I am giving away like $200 worth of nails and lashes on my Instagram. So go check it out if you're interested. And as always, with all of my videos, if you enjoy this, give it a big thumbs up and make sure you subscribe. New videos here every single Thursday and also on Saturday on Rachel's Life. We ate all my pregnancy cravings in the last week's video. It was a great time. And without further ado, let's get into this. All right, now that we are zoomed in a little bit, wow, my brows, they are, they have a mood today. I always wanna start with my brows even though I know I'm gonna regret it later when I try and put on foundation. I don't even care because I don't like how my eyeshadow looks my brows aren't done. So that's what we're gonna start with. We're gonna be testing out the Fenty Brow MVP. This is their Ultra Fine Pencil Brow Styler. And I have here the shade Medium Blonde. I also have another shade, this one is too light. Ooh, it's white. I thought it was, I thought it would be black because of the packaging. Threw me off. I was just sitting here being like, where did it go? Where, where did it go? It's very glossy white packaging. It has the color right here of what the brow color is, which I love. And it's almost triangular, like a rounded triangular kind of shape but inside is a nice small pencil, not the triangular ones, which sometimes you do get, like ABH has that, for example, Wet n Wild as well. A whole bunch of brands are doing that, but this is just a straight up, typical, thin brow pencil. And, you guys see this? I have a toothbrush on here. I don't know how I missed that when I was researching. Yeah, that, that threw me off. Let's try that for brushing up the, oh! All right, Fenty. All right, I see you. I was like, I don't know how this is gonna work, but um, yeah, no, it does. It, it works, well, so far anyway. And my brow hairs, as you guys can see, I have them all over the place. I haven't had my brows done in a long time, which I don't really enjoy that I admitted that. And I have a lot of brow hair and they are rebellious. They like to do their own thing. They do not listen to the laws. There need to be brow laws. We should, we should implement those immediately. Let's take a look at what we're working with here. Kind of wanted to start with the, the lighter shade because I've been doing a lot of darker brows recently. So I'm just kind of in the mood to do something a little lighter. See where that takes us. You guys know the drill by now. I will sit here silently doing my brows and not tell you anything. It's more honey toned than I'm used to doing my, oh, here's another shade. Oh my gosh, you guys should see my floor right now. I just got back from New York and um, it's not great. This right here is ash brown. This might be a better, yeah. Yeah, no, we're gonna go with that one. This brow is always my favorite brow. Don't tell this one. This one never pays attention. Okay, try and get her to do the, the right thing and she just doesn't. A rebellious toddler, honestly. Okay, product is in. Just sort of doing little final touches. I have set the brows. And now, my thoughts. I think for me, it is a very standard pencil. It is a good pencil. I haven't seen anything that I don't like about it thus far. We'll see how long lasting it is. As always, always do a full day wear test. But I know that they do really pride themselves in having a large shade range, which is really important when you're trying to find something that matches your brow tone and that can like make or break a pencil. I mean, really that's annoying for any makeup product, but you want it to match your brows. So that's a thing in, you can kind of keep in mind. I think it is a good pencil. It is nothing mind blowing by any standards but it's good. So now let's move on to eyeshadow. And I have a new eyeshadow palette in front of me and it's fuzzy. Feels really nice. Can't stop touching it and it reminds me of Clueless. And it is the Tarte Fall Feels palette. This is an eye and cheek palette. Seriously, I can't get over the plaid. They have a bunch of shades around the outside and then one shade in the center, which I believe would be more of a, I don't, I don't even know, like that's not really a blush. What is it? Cheek palette. I, I, don't, I don't know, like a really, really pale blush. And then we also have a chrome paint pot and this is in caramel apple. Caramel apple? What do you say? Caramel or caramel? And this one, oh, my nails are long. Not used to this. Ooh, it's beautiful. It's got the this 
intense reflection. It's got a bit of a more of like a ready, warm, coppery base to it, which is really beautiful. It's not too orange, definitely more in like the pink red tone, um, but beautiful. So I wanna play around with that as well. So let's start just applying some of these shades. We're gonna start with something lighter and kind of build. I don't know what I'm feeling like yet. I don't know if I wanna like dip my toe into some of that blue, maybe some green, cause I don't really wear a lot of green. I mean, <laughs> As I'm, as I'm wearing green, but like not a lot of green in the eyes. So maybe like a green corn. Honestly, Rachel, I saw the name corn and I was like, like a corn shade. Whoa, that's, that's a lot. That's very pigmented. I'm not mad at it though. That's a really pretty shade. I mean, it doesn't look great night now. Can you imagine? I was just like, okay, I'm done. So this is a great palette. I'm gonna try and pick up some of that caramel apple shade just on my fingertips. Oh, I love that color. Ooh, it's so pretty. I love the chrome paint pots. Sometimes I have like a, I have a love hate relationship with some of the Tarte palettes. They, sometimes they have really, really great shimmers and like glittery shades and stuff. And then sometimes it just doesn't pop, but like chrome, chrome paint pots never fail me. Okay, so that is good right now because I'm about to put on whole bunch of other stuff on my eyes. But what do I think of the formula and the product so far? I just swatched the other kind of three shimmery shades here. I did apply Pumpkin Patch just to sort of a little bit on the outer corner, just kind of like up here a little, like boop. I think the shades are really pretty. These shades really shocked me in how pigmented they are. When I was applying it with a brush, I was like, oh, oh, like they're really gorgeous. And they applied well to the eyes. I kind of feathered it out a bit. I didn't want it as like harsh on the eyes. I wanted it a little bit softer, um, but you could definitely build this up to be a really strong smoky green or blue eye. I think the blush shade in the middle, if that is a blush, can't think of what else it could be, is a little bit of a miss for me personally. I think that's very pale even for myself and I am very pale and I feel like it's missing like a rich kind of a chocolate brown that you could kind of create more of a smoky effect that feels very fall to me. That kind of felt like it was missing from here but in terms of the shades I think they're really pretty. I will continue to use this. I do really like Hayride. Um, and I like to sip insider. I don't see it as the thing I use all the time, but it is nice. But I think my favorite honestly was the Chrome Pot. The Chrome Pot's just very nice and shimmery and like gives this nice glossy effect to the lids. I love it. So now I'm gonna wash off my hands. Now I'm gonna apply a little bit of mascara, curl them lashes because I am gonna try out a false lash which will be interesting for pickup today. Sometimes I feel like a really weird version of Hannah Montana when I go to pickup. Either I'm, I'm in pajamas or I'm fully glammed up, but also in pajamas. My current go-to favorite combo for mascara. First of all, why I sell the shock. I'm back on it, everyone. I was off it for a while, but I'm back. Just like the most dramatic lashes with one coat. Like I can't can't not use this. Oh, and I also put on a little bit of um, liner on the on the tight line. I just realized it's one eye and not the other. It's also a new one by NARS. I actually tested it fairly recently. It's their high pigment long wear eyeliner. I use the shade Mambo, this one right here. They're very nice and creamy and they don't smudge very easily for me, at least underneath the eyes. Um, I've been really enjoying them. And then, then, that's not all everyone. I also go in with the Wander Beauty Mile High Club. I just add this sort of to the tips of the lashes, just give it a little bit of extra length. And I also apply this to my bottom lashes, which I will do once I put on a little concealer. But this combo for me is just, oh, it's everything. It's perfection. Not that it really matters. I don't know why I'm putting on so much mascara because I'm gonna put on false lashes. What am I doing? And the false lashes I'm gonna be testing out, this came in from Amira Ness, and this is their Magnetic Liner Lash Kit. And I've been seeing all of your DMs coming in on Insta, you guys asking about this Magnetic Liner. There's like a whole bunch of different ones that are like popping up on everyone's Facebook feeds and Instas. And so when I saw this, I was like, yes, let's test this out because the lashes look really pretty. I find sometimes, sometimes, with the Magnetic Lashes and any of these type of things, the the lashes aren't the greatest, but these ones look really, really beautiful. Just really soft and fluffy and like 3D. They're all 
It's very fluffy. It's so fluffy. And what better time to test it out than a big glam fall makeup look. So that is what we're going to be doing today. I'm gonna to test out the liner, see how that looks, see how long wearing it is with the lashes as well. So this is my first time trying magnetic liner. I'm very excited. So first the liner, it is a brush tip applicator. These are not my favorite because I find that they tend to like splay out over time um, and they just get everywhere, but never fear, we will, we will prevail. And I need a smaller mirror. Oh, I think Tarte's got one, yes. So I think the only thing I have to do is I just have to make sure that I apply the, the liner right along the lash line and that's it. That's all I have to do. So liner so far is nothing like super exciting or anything. Like it's, it's fine. It's fairly easy to apply, not having any trouble, but it's not the blackest liner that I've used. All right. Let's give these a go. So we have here two different styles. They have a very big dramatic lash as well as something that's a little bit softer. Probably gonna go for these ones today because I find these ones are very overwhelming on my eye shape and look a little ridiculous. Let's try these out and see how this works. I think I just like place it on, right? Whew, the metal, metal's a little bit cold. Ooh. Ooh, so I just have to get, it's a little longer than I had anticipated. Not like a, not too long, um, but I just want to kind of like add a little, add a little line here. But like that was really painless to apply and they look gorgeous. These are gorgeous. Oh, okay, Miraness, I see you. I see you with these. Look how soft and like, I hope it's just not like, I hope this translates on camera as like pretty as they are in here. Oh, I'm obsessed. Wow. Wow. That was really easy peasy. So far I like them. We're gonna see how long lasting they are and if they start to like peel off or anything like that. But so far, very excited. So now we're gonna move on to the face. I'm gonna start with a primer. This is by Giorgio Armani and it is their Luminous Silk Hydrating Primer. Now they have a hydrating foundation, which they are very well known for. So this is the hydrating primer version. It's supposed to blur, add a little bit of like a nice hint of luminosity to the skin as well. And uh, anything else I need to know? It's supposed to make the skin look gorgeous, which it should for about $60. Look how tiny this is, by the way. Ooh, it's better be worth it, Giorgio Armani. So in terms of the texture, it is a little bit on the transparent side. I'll show you guys. It, it comes out very quickly out of the bottle. So I'm just, I tried to seal it immediately. You cannot waste any of this. This is like $10. Looks like this has a little bit of a peachy undertone to it, but in that very soft, almost see-through kind of a way. A little bit of luminosity, nothing too crazy. No scent to it either, which is surprising now that I think about it. Most high-end brands add like a really intense uh, sent to all their products, but there's nothing at all with this one. Feels a little bit on the slippery side, um, not too not too much on the silicone side, but very slippery, very greasy. I feel like you have oily skin, you're not gonna love this feeling at all, but it is supposed to be a hydrating primer, so you probably wouldn't like it anyway. We'll see what it does in terms of like pores and kind of blurring the skin out. It looks pretty standard on my skin right now. Nothing that's like wowing me in any way, though we will see once I put on the foundation if that changes at all. And I'm gonna be testing out a new one from Zoeva. And this is their Authentic Skin Natural Luminous Foundation. This is their first ever foundation launch, which is super, super exciting. And I've been waiting to test this out. We have a whole pamphlet right here. Ooh, ah. This particular foundation is supposed to be a medium buildable coverage kind of foundation, 44 different shades to choose from, from warm, cool, and neutral undertones. I have three different shades here, energetic, charismatic, and daring. They also have a number associated with each of them to help you find the right undertone or shade range. So I'm going to start, I guess I should start by opening them. Oh, they're all sealed up. Hold on, bringing out 
Ugh, I have scissors. Where are my little scissors? Oh, there they are. I'm just starting with Energetic and Daring. Um, they're both neutral undertone, which is more my skin tone. I think Charismatic, which is a cooler undertone, is going to be a little bit too pinky for me personally. Um, let's see what these ones look like here. So these are the shades right here. So we have, this is Daring. This is 120 and this is 140. They look very similar. This one is a hair lighter but like not a lot of difference there. Put a little bit of each on here. I can get out. Woo, that was a lot, Rachel. So this is 120 and this is 140. I would say 140 definitely has more of a ready kind of an undertone to it. I think I'm more 120, I think. I'm gonna open up Charismatic just to take a look because these feel very warm to me. So right here we have 90C, definitely a little bit more pinky and these ones are more yellow and a little bit more on the red tone side here. What happens if I start mixing them? <laughs> Actually, you know what? Mixing them all together did a great job. I mean, that's not really what you want. You wanna find just one shade that would work. I mean, they kind of took a guess um, and just sent me some shades that they thought might work for my skin tone. So maybe there's one out there that is a better blend. Um, today I'm going to use all three kind of mixed together, but I mean, there are 44 shades here. So one would hope I can find my actual shade. Oh, I just realized I, st oh, I haven't unpacked all of my, my brushes. So they're still in my bag. Oh my gosh, I love how I went all the way over and got my brushes and forgot that they actually have a foundation brush that they launched. So I'm gonna use this one. This is just their buffing brush. I love the packaging, by the way. Look how gorgeous that is. I'm just going to apply this to the skin. Whoa, that is uh, coverage. Okay, let's uh, dial that back a little, Rachel. <laughs> it looks very smooth on the skin, a little bit, a hint of luminosity to it thus far. We'll see what happens when it dries down if that changes at all if it darkens at all um but so far it looks and feels really great on the skin it is oxidizing a bit like i am noticing it is darkening a lot ah oh, shoot i should have just used one of them darn it okay it, this does oxidize quite a bit i don't know if you guys are noticing i have like a hair on my lip Arr, that is super annoying my my entire face is a different shade than my neck right now. So keeping that in mind, I think next time I'm just going to do the 120N because that one was a little bit lighter than my skin, so it should darken to the correct shade. It's all right, it's okay, that's what neck bronze is for. Outside of the fact that it's oxidizing, I do like the, the finish. It doesn't look very heavy on my skin. It's not sinking into any lines or anything like that. Just looking very natural, but still a lot of nice coverage to it. It is not feeling like I'm blending it out and just kind of washing away. Now to conceal, I'm just using a bit of the uh, the Pure Foreign one. Love your selfie. I'm obsessed with this stuff. As foundation, as well as um, concealer. Just sits so well. It doesn't crease, it's amazing. I'm just gonna set it all down very, very lightly. I'm using my my go-to right now, which is the um, Elizabeth Arden uh, Blurring Powder. It just looks so good and natural and it blurs. Can't stop. It's one of my faves. How long have I been using this powder? Like seriously, it's, it feels like it's been forever. That's how you know it's true love though. And let's add a little bit of mascara underneath the eyes. Kind of balance out a little bit with the, the heavy lashes. And also while that like dries down, I'm gonna go in with bronzer. This is also not a new one, but a ride or die. This is the butter bronzer. I like to mix it up when I'm trying new products. I used to try and get like every single product to be new, but I feel like this is a good balance and that way I have products that I'm using that I love, that I know work really well, mixed in with some new products and then I can talk a little bit more length about the ones that are really new. And then it just doesn't feel as overwhelming, you know? Like I get overwhelmed sometimes when there's just so many new products. Like have you seen how many new foundations are out there right now? Like it's bananas. It's like all of the brands all got together and said, you know what we should launch together? 4,000 foundations. You see how much bronzing I'm having to do just to get it to match? That's partially my fault though. I should have checked to make sure that it wasn't gonna oxidize. 
before I applied it like literally all over my face. But you know what? You live and you learn. It's been a while since I've dealt with like a foundation that oxidizes. Now I wanna go on to a new product and this is a new collaboration between Iman and Catrice and this is their blush palette which looked really, really beautiful when I opened it up. I was like, ooh, pretty. And it looks like one has a hint of shimmer to it and then a couple of matte shades. Cairo looks almost uh, like a bronzer for me. I love the oranges here, like just a really pretty complimentary palette. And this is a palette, I think Tati talked about it in her drugstore products that will blow your mind video that she did recently. And it was really exciting. A lot of you guys had mentioned um, that Tati had talked about the layers palette and I saw it, it was so sweet of her to mention it. Um, so you can go and check out that video if you are interested in another review. But I believe she said this was a, a very um, intense blush, if I remember correctly. And then I'm gonna go in with a little bit of, this is Alexandria up here, a little bit more of a, sh like a hint of shimmer. Nothing too crazy, but it does give a little bit of luminosity to the skin. I've just been obsessed with blush. You know when you just go into like, and you have moods where you're just like, I just need to douse myself in a thousand layers of blush. I mean, there's a fine line between a lot of like rosy tone blushes and then clown. But I like to walk that line. <laughs> these are beautiful. I basically just like am melding all of these together, except for Cairo. I feel like Cairo would be a little uh, dark for me for a blush, though I can see myself using it as a bronzer. But these three shades, I've just basically been like do, 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 and playing with all of them, mixing them, and they look so pretty together. I actually have such a love of the Catrice blushes. They are absolutely incredible. They blend out so seamlessly. They stay put all day. I've just really enjoyed them. Then we're gonna highlight. I'm gonna take a bit of clutch from the layers palette. Put that on here first for a nice little soft dusting. Then we can build it. Might add a little bit of tea, actually, a little gold. A little gold accent. Nobody was nobody's mad at that. And then just a hint, hint of lace. Lace is very strong. Okay, now we have some new lip shades. These come in from L'Oreal. They're different plumping lip colors. Um, we have watermelon, coconut, a whole bunch of, ooh, I wonder if they smell nice. Oh, well, oh, it's got a my nose there. <laughs> smells pretty, smells fruity, but do, do they all smell different? Kind of? No, they didn't. They didn't do different scents for each of them, did they? They absolutely 100% did. That's hilarious. What do the other ones smell like? Oh, I don't like the smell of the guava one. It's subtle, but I don't like it. It's just like a plumping shiny lip gloss, a little hint of color, nothing too crazy. And they do have one, I think this one's clear. This is lychee. This is clear. Ooh, it's not, uh, yes. No, no. It is a little bit of like a gold sheen to it, but it's super subtle. Just a heads up, I thought this was clear. It's not. Ooh, the coconut one. Why do you, like, what is this placement? Like right here in the center. Why, Rachel? I just like put that on just for, just cause. It's a little light, but I'm not mad at it. Oh, it's kind of tingly. Okay, it's not crazy. Just concerned there for a second, but it's not over the top. It's just a little tingly. I do really like this color. Let's try another one. Let's try nectarine. It's like an orangey color. I like the scent of it. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Ooh, uh, I like it. Kind of picks up some of the tones in the blush because of that orange kick. I'm not mad at that. No, no, I'm not. It's very glossy. This is not going to be a very long wearing shade by any means, but it feels really good. It's a little bit, it has that tingly feeling, that little bit of like, hold on. I need to, I need this to be on my lips for a second because it keeps changing on me. It definitely has that tingly feeling. It's starting to progress a little bit, almost into numbing. Uh, I don't know if I like that feeling. No, I don't. Mm. Oh, the color's so pretty. Does this stay forever? Like, does it go away? Okay, I'm gonna let this sit for a second. I don't know how I feel about it. Um, I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna give this a second, see if it settles down. And if it doesn't, I probably will start taking it off because I don't like this sensation on my lips that it feels like it's numbing it. Not a big fan. But in the meantime, while we just let this kind of sit for a second, I'm going to apply the Catrice Cosmetics Dewy Glow Fixing Spray. This is illuminating. It has some particles in it that are gonna add a little bit of shine to the skin, so you have to shake it first. I don't think I've tried the illuminating one yet. 
You definitely need to hold it from a bit of a distance. It's strong, but it's not like in that like super aggressive splatter way. So far I like it. My skin is looking like skin, but like perfected. It's got this nice like glossiness to it that it's not in an oily way. Ooh, hold on. I'm gonna take some up close footage with my phone here so you can actually see what I'm talking about. Cause I want you guys to see my skin right now. It just looks very like glossy. It doesn't look overdone in any way. Yeah, yeah, I'm into it. This whole combination is real good for me right now. So we got some interesting products here. I'm very happy with how my skin looks like right now. So I'm hoping that's gonna stay like this. I am gonna go walk over in the it's boiling lava hot outside, despite the fact that this is a fall centered tutorial. So we'll see how it holds up in the heat. I will check in with you guys tonight. We'll see how everything is wearing. So see you guys in a bit. Oh, I almost forgot the lip stuff. It's still a little bit tingly, I don't, I don't like that feeling right now, but there are ones that are very, very similar to these that have the shine, but they don't have the plumping effect. So if you like the plumping effect, you'd probably like this. It is mild, like it is not over the top. And if you're used to that, perfect. For me, I'm not used to this feeling. I don't particularly like it right now. I'm going to take this off. So that wasn't a favorite of mine. I prefer just these straight up shine ones, but I thought I would mention that because I, damn, I need to take it off right now. <laughs> See you guys in a bit. Okay guys, it's now at the end of the day. This is what my makeup is now looking like. So let's talk about this. So first of all, the lashes. So I really, really love them. I'm gonna try a thicker coat of liner next time because you can see the lashes like completely come off because it seems like I think the, the liner has come off or maybe I didn't do a thick enough line maybe. Um, but I, I was so impressed with it. So that was super frustrating. I hope that that was just like something on my part that I just missed because they were so easy to apply. They looked really great, um, but that concerns me. The foundation's starting to look a little bit patchy. I'll zoom in so you guys can see a little bit. Um, I'm just starting to see it, it just like rubbing off in areas where it would normally kind of rub off, like around the mouth. Um, it is 10 o'clock at night. Um, but it isn't my favorite. I think I still prefer the pure four in one selfie foundation for me personally. I don't think it's bad. I don't love that it oxidized so much and it really looked like skin all day. So I will be using that one again, but I think I might try it with the, um, the cover effects, uh, gripping primer because that one works just so well for me, especially for these more hydrating formulas. I feel like they grip onto them so well. The Chrome Paint Pot still gorgeous. The eyeshadow is really pretty. The Fenty um, brow product is fine. Nothing super exciting or thrilling or anything with that, but it's fine. Um, the Catrice blush is still looking really good and looked good all day. Yeah, it was kind of a mixed bag today. I was not expecting the, the lashes to turn out the way that they did though. I need to try that again. Have you tried any of these products though? Let me know in the comments if you've tried any of them, if you like them, if you don't like them, if there are any products that like you guys are really excited about and you would love me to try out, do a full day wear test, let me know in the comments. And check out these videos on the side in case you have missed any recently on here or on Rachel's Loves Life. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And that's everything. I hope you guys are having an awesome, awesome week and I will see you guys all in my next video. Love you all. Mwah.